Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you a glimpse into my chess study routine. So my study time is primarily split up into about three to four sections. So I start off with doing puzzle rush and that's just to warm up and get my pattern recognition going, get focused, get in that flow state. I then move into playing a game. I try to just play one rapid game a day and analyze it. And then that also takes me right into practicing openings, going through my opening repertoire. And then if I missed anything in the game that I just played from my repertoire that I have, I will practice that or add to that as needed. And then I will move into some calculation practice. All right, let's start with some puzzle rush. So I've used Puzzle Rush to warm up and practice for a while now. What I used to do is just a straight set time. So I would literally do an hour of just Puzzle Rush. I eventually found that my pattern recognition had sort of caught up to my level, which is why I started doing it in the first place is because I just wasn't finding tactics in games. And so it was really helpful in just like seeing those patterns over and over again. So what I'm doing these days is I can't play my game until I have gotten three scores of 30 in three minute puzzle rush. So, you know, that might take 20 minutes, it might take the full hour, but it really helps me get into the flow and feel warmed up and ready to jump right into a game. So the kind of tactics that I see in puzzle rush because it starts with really easy puzzles and slowly works its way up to harder ones, those are so much about the pattern recognition, and I separate that in my mind from calculation puzzles, which are basically just harder. So they require me to sit there for a while and stare at the position and find the correct move, and it's not something I can just click in half a second. So that calculation practice will come later. We're not done with the puzzles quite yet. Okay, we got Puzzle Rush done. I'm going to play my game. I try my best to just play one rapid game when I'm doing a study session. Sometimes that doesn't happen. It helps when I have a camera keeping me accountable. Anything faster than 10 minutes, so any blitz, any bullet, those in my mind are not part of my study time. You will see if you look at my chess.com profile that I play a lot of blitz and a lot of bullet. That has to come outside of my study time. That's not allowed to be included. And honestly, even the 10 minute games are pretty fast and I luckily am able to go to a chess club every week where I get to play longer games. But the longer the better because it gives you more time to think and then those games are a lot more helpful because you're able to sit with those positions longer. And so you can see a little bit clearer where you went wrong in your thought process. So win or lose analyzing afterwards is really important. Even if you win, there are most likely going to be some moments where you've made mistakes and that you can improve for next time. I mean, it was losing, but he just took so much time, especially like in the middle game. So this game I just finished ended in a draw. My opponent ran out of time, but I was definitely losing. So I definitely just got lucky. It got down to an end game and I had to sacrifice my bishop for my opponent's outside pass pawn. And it was actually an equal game even after I did that. But what I realized in analyzing is that I did the wrong pawn moves on the other side of the board that made it so that my opponent could create another passer, get rid of my pawns, shoulder my king out of the way, and promote a queen. So after that game, I also went back through my opening repertoire and made sure move by move that I was following the correct line. And then I saw where I deviated and figured out the correct move that I should have made. And then I try as much as possible to verbalize to myself the reasons behind that move. Because if you're just memorizing moves, I mean, you're, you're not really learning the openings. You really have to understand the ideas. So games are done. I did some really intense opening study yesterday. So I think that's all I'm going to do with openings for today. So let's move over and do some calculation stuff. So here we are at the physical board. I like to incorporate this into my practice as much as I possibly can because I learned how to play chess on a computer screen and I do most of my chess on a computer screen. And so as far as preparing for over the board tournaments, it's a completely different experience to see the 3D board for whatever reason, right? So when I have a tournament coming up, I like to practice my openings, running lines several times using the physical board in the week or two leading up to it. At this point, I actually don't know when my next tournament is going to be. And so I've been pretty happy to work on my openings on the computer, building out my repertoire from there. So instead today, I just got this book. It's called Thinking Inside the Box. 
and I'm going to find a position in here, set it up, and I believe this is going to be some good calculation practice for me. So let's get into it. I found it helpful at times to practice my calculation by having a timer going because in a real game, you don't have unlimited time to think. You gotta make a decision at a certain point. So imitating that game state where you do have a clock ticking down beside you, I found is helpful. When I'm practicing calculation, I'm really practicing thought process and trying to do that in a way that I can apply in real games. So of course, looking for forcing move, looking for checks, captures, threats, evaluating the position, looking at different features of the position and trying to figure out how those play into different tactics that might be available. All of that plays a role in the way that I want to be thinking about chess while I'm playing a chess game. Okay, I have sat with this position for five minutes. I set a timer and I feel like I still have barely cracked the surface, to be honest. He recommends doing at least five minutes, ideally 30 minutes. So I might actually come back to this tomorrow. So I have some ideas, like the only really forcing move I have is bishop takes f7. Like what is next, you know? The, the king just feels so vulnerable, but I just don't know how to get at it. The theme of this chapter is simple but difficult. And he says it's one of the most difficult exercises he has in his collection. Many great grandmasters have tried to solve it, but only one has succeeded. I'm actually gonna leave this set up for my session tomorrow and spend some more time with it. It's getting really late and I don't wanna skip over this because it seems like a really instructive exercise. But thank you for joining me for this study session. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and let me know if you wanna see more content like this. I appreciate you, I'll see you soon.